What up folks, it's Alex here. How you all doing? I'm doing a bit of a general update video for you today because I've got some things to talk about and I haven't made a video on the channel for a few days. So here we are. We're going to talk about some of the new features in the DaVinci Resolve 19 beta, like the Stinger transitions, and we're going to speculate when 19 might be going live. But before that, ResolveCon. ResolveCon is next week, ResolveCon 2024. If you've never heard of ResolveCon, it's an annual kind of get together. It's put on by Casey Farris and his crew, and there's a load of other YouTubers, and we all get together and we all just make educational content on the internet for you guys to watch and enjoy. It's all going to be live. There's a few days which are completely free, so you can just tune in, you can watch a bunch of the sessions, and there is also going to be some VIP sessions which you can buy tickets for as well. They are available right now. If you want to check out ResolveCon, you simply head over to ResolveCon.com. There's a link down in the description below. As you can see, it's the world's biggest DaVinci Resolve training event, and it starts in just six days and five hours as of right now. You can sign up for updates and the registration info, and if we scroll right down, Here's all the beautiful people that are going to be taking part. There's me, there's Casey, there's Daria, Darren, Cullen, Jason, and everyone else. And if we keep going down, we've got the schedule. So I'm actually the first. I'm kicking things off on Wednesday, August the 21st. Mr. Alex Tech, editing at lightning speed in DaVinci Resolve. So for my first one, you know me, I love quick tips and tricks. So we're going to go through a bunch of the things that I use on a daily basis to edit nice and quickly within DaVinci Resolve. And then we've got things like Daria and Ali Bartlett talking about how to use text like a pro, and we've got audio and lightsabers by Gadali. There's all sorts of really cool stuff. And then my VIP session is on the Sunday, and we're going to be talking about creating presets and plugins for DaVinci Resolve. So I'm going to talk you through some of the little tips and tricks I use to create my plugins and show you some stuff which I've never really talked about on the channel before. We're talking about using the macro editor, the built-in, as well as some of the simple things you can do within the actual dot settings files themselves. So if you're into all that nerdy preset stuff, check that out as well. As mentioned, ResolveCon links are down below. It's going to be a really fun few days, so you should definitely check it out. Even if you only want to check out the free stuff, that's all going to be on Casey's channel. You can go and just tune in and watch all of that fun stuff and send us your comments as we go. Should be really neat. Next up, let's talk about DaVinci Resolve. So DaVinci Resolve 19 beta number 6 was released last week. And first things first, Yes, beta. I say beta. Every time we talk about the beta, there's someone in the comments saying, why is it beta? Why does it say beta? And it's because it's beta. Beta is the correct way to say it. I'm going to keep saying beta. Have a drink every time I say beta. Beta. <laughs> and while it doesn't contain anything kind of too juicy, there's no massive updates in this one, there are a few nuggets of things that are worth speaking about. So... Let's go back over there a sec. If you want to download it and you haven't got the beta currently, you just head over to blackmagicdesign.com forward slash support, and then you can find DaVinci Resolve 19 public beta number six and DaVinci Resolve Studio 19 public beta number six to download and install. If you're already running a version of the beta, it should automatically pop up within your installation, or you can go to DaVinci Resolve, check for updates, and it will let you know if there is a new version available. If we head over to the Blackmagic forum, there's this nice post which breaks down all of the new stuff. So let's whip through it really quick and I'll show you some of the main things. First up, support for Blackmagic RAW 4.2. We've got new halation saturation controls for Resolve FX Film Look Creator. I'm a big fan of the Film Look Creator. It's limited to the studio only version of DaVinci Resolve, but it's a really neat feature. This update just gives us a little more granular control over the saturation of the halation effect that's built into the film look. We can import and export speaker tagged transcriptions. There's some new Stinger templates, which I'll show you in a second. Ability to resync media for all your media bins from the replay toolbar. Again, I actually talked about how to resync your media in your bins in the previous update, because that's a nice new feature as well. Again, link down below if you fancy checking that out. Add transition to all edits action in the cut timeline. I'll show you that in a second. 
and transitions are now retained when Ripple deleting clips. Plus a bunch of new support for different sort of encoding types and bit rates and all that sort of stuff. And addressed loads of bug fixes and general performance and stability updates. So that's it in a nutshell. Let's have a real quick look at the things which are actually kind of handy. And the first one, retaining transitions when Ripple deleting clips. So if we jump into DaVinci Resolve, and all I'm going to do, grab any old transition, put it on this edit point like so. And if I give this clip a click and then hit the delete key to do a ripple delete, it'll delete this clip, it'll close the gap, but it will keep that transition. Now that's only a small thing, but previously what would happen if you hit delete, it would do something like that. It would delete the clip and the transition, which would then mean you'd have to go and get the transition again and put it on your new edit point. Now you can just delete things, and keep the transitions, which is really handy. It's a quality of life thing. It's not a major update, but it does make life a little bit easier. Now, sticking with transitions, if we jump over to the cut page and over here on the left, this icon here, this is your timeline actions. If we give that a click, come down, there's a new option, which is to add transitions to all edits. Now, this is slightly interesting because what it will do is just use the previously used transition. So I can grab any transition from here. Let's just go with a heart one, for example, put it on this edit point. Then we click on our timeline actions, come down, add transition to all edits, and it will just dump that same transition over all of the different edit points. So we've got the heart like so. Now that's not a major thing, it's an extra thing that you can do without having to jump onto the edit page. It may be useful for like slideshows maybe, if you just wanna really quickly dump a transition over all of your edit points, for example, but there are other ways to do that anyway. So, you know, it's a little addition. There's one slightly strange thing with it, which I think kind of needs updating, to be honest. And that is, let me just clear all of these. You can also clear transitions, clear transitions from all edits, which is handy. The biggest problem with this, if you put the heart transition on, for example, give it a click, change any of these settings. So we'll just tweak all of this, do what we like. Then we'll go and click on our little add transition to all edits. It doesn't use your custom changes. So this custom one has all of this amended and this one does not. So you could then go and create a transition preset and you'd have to do a transition preset, but you can't create transition presets from the cut page. So then you'd have to jump over to the edit page and then create your preset and then, uh, yeah. Yeah, it feels a bit of a, a strange addition. It doesn't quite kind of do exactly what I'd expect it to do. But anyway, it's there and I just wanted to show you really quick. Now the last one to talk about, the last new addition for this before we talk about the actual full release of the Vinci Resolve 19, which we'll go back to in a second, is the inclusion of some built-in default stinger transitions. Now, stinger transitions, if you've never heard the term, they're kind of like regular transitions, but they have alpha channels. So they go above your footage rather than sitting on your footage. They're commonly used on things like Twitch because you can use them on live streams to hide the cuts between going from like a talking head to a gameplay video. They're also used on sort of live broadcasts and all that sort of thing, which is why they've now been included in DaVinci Resolve for use with the replay editor the replay function they added at some point. So let me show you where they are and how they work. So I'm on the edit page. If we open up the effects library, we go to generators, scroll right to the bottom, and then you've got all of these stinger transitions. So you simply grab one because it's a generator. It sits on a new track above your footage and then you hit play and this will pop in, hide everything. So you can't see anything underneath. That's kind of the point and then it'll transition to that new clip. If we give the generator a click, we've got a bunch of options within the inspector so we can change the text, for example. We can change the logo, so we can use a custom logo and then change the size, and we can change the colors and all this sort of stuff. And there's a bunch of them, and they're quite nice actually. So we can just grab this one instead and we hit play, and this one just pops in and then pops up. And you can make them as long or as short as you need them to be. Happy days. So you can use those in your projects within DaVinci Resolve, but what you can also do is export those and import them into OBS if you want to basically just steal them and use them for your own Twitch live streams or whatever else you want. To do that, all you want to do, fresh timeline, so there's nothing on here at all. We'll just grab the circles one for a test and we hit play and this is what it's gonna look like. 
Ta-da! We can give it a click and then we can customize all the stuff that we want. So let's say I just want this to say Mr. Alex Tech and we'll change the font to something else. And there we go, this is what we're going to export. Now side note, You'll notice I've got a checkerboard background, which is really nice because I can actually see what's going to be alpha rather than just seeing a black background. If you want that as well, you click on this little icon here, timeline view options. There's a new option here, viewer background. And rather than it just being black, which can be a little bit confusing, you can change this to be checkerboard instead. Anyway, that's the sideline. Once we've got a stinger to kind of look however we want it to look, we simply jump over to the deliver page and then we render this out, but using an alpha channel, which means that all of this transparent stuff will actually be transparent, which allows us to use it within OBS. To do that, all you need to do, you export the video. So we're gonna go a custom export. And if you're on Windows, you just need to make sure your format is QuickTime. You want the codec to be GoPro Cineform, and then you want it to be RGB 16-bit. And there's an option here, export, alpha and that means that the transparent stuff will actually be transparent you can render this off and then add it to obs job done so there you go nothing too major but handy small additions they're actually quite easy to make those stinger transitions as well because it's just going alpha to alpha so you could generate them and create your own within fusion if you wanted to if you'd like me to make some videos on that, let me know down in the comment section below. Now, one final thing to finish this video. The beta has been going for some time. DaVinci Resolve 19 in its beta form was released in April, just ahead of NAB, and it's still in beta. And we're in, what are we in now? Middle of August, which seems like quite a long time. So I went back and I had a look at some of the previous updates. DaVinci Resolve 18 and DaVinci Resolve 18.5, which are the previous two major ones. They also went into beta about April ahead of NAB, but they actually launched, they went live at the end of July. So this is a really long beta period. It's probably the longest one we've had in the past few versions. So I would imagine it will be going live quite soon. It will be fully launching DaVinci Resolve 19. We've actually got IBC next month, which is a big expo over in Amsterdam and I'd be pretty certain it would be live before then. That starts on the 13th of September. I have no inside information. This isn't, I'm not leaking any news or anything like that. I have no inside information from Blackmagic whatsoever, no affiliation with them, but I'd imagine it will be launching, it will be going properly live, probably by the end of the month, if not at the very latest before IBC, which is the 13th to the 16th of September, hopefully. So there you go. There's a bit of a general update as well as talking about this new beta, beta, update-y thing. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. I'll see you next time.